drunk. Super Nintendo games made by Natsume have been getting modern facelifts for the past few years now. It's an effort led by Tango Project, a team consisting of three core members that worked on original SNES games like Wild Guns, Ninja Warriors, and the Pocky and Rocky series. They've been hard at work for a while now, going back to 2016, which saw the release of Wild Guns Reloaded. Then in 2019, we got Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors, and in 2022, the team's most recent effort, as of this video, Pocky and Rocky Reshrined, was released. And if if you even so much as kinda sorta like the original games, you're gonna have a good time with the remakes. In the case of Pocky and Rocky specifically, it's always been one of the more underappreciated games in the Super Nintendo library. It's a top-down run-and-gun shooter that supports two players, where you play as the Shrine Maiden Pocky or the helpful Tanuki Rocky, and you just fire away with your projectile attacks in eight different directions, sometimes all at once, against some truly strange-looking enemies pulled out of Japanese mythology. One of the game's biggest appeals, both when it was released and today, is the difficulty. It just toes the line of being a really tough game without being unfair, and it's especially fun to tackle this game with a second player, since you can knock each other around. It's non-stop crazy action with a ton of weird and unpredictable stuff popping up around every corner. There's never a dull moment. Pocky and Rocky Reshrined starts out as a typical remake, and the first two levels from the original game are beautifully recreated, just with everything bigger, faster, and more detailed and more crazy. Remember this octopus boss at the end of level 2? Well, now it looks like this. Just slightly more terrifying, but it seriously looks awesome, and it feels great when you finally finish this thing off. I think when most people imagine a modern remake of a Super Nintendo game, this is what they think of. The same pixel art graphics style is held intact, just expanded to fit a 16-9 view screen, but with more characters, more items, and brand new levels. It feels like the best possible special edition director's cut for a game like this that you could ask for, especially since, you know, not every old game can get a remake the size and scope of something like, say, Final Fantasy VII. This is just little old Pocky and Rocky, but Tango Project hit it out of the park once again. After the second level, the story kicks in and things have changed drastically. Black Mantle, the final boss from the original game, shows up out of nowhere, saying he's traveled through time with revenge on his mind, and he zaps Rocky, separating her soul from her body, so to get her body back, she has to borrow somebody else's. To start with, she gets a goddess named Ame no Uzume. Huh, not a bad start. She has her own special abilities, like being able to place an R-type style pod in the middle of the stage, and shooting that for a bit creates some additional firepower, and eventually Paki can do this herself. Later, you also take control of a warrior named Hataru, who mostly uses melee attacks, and you also eventually unlock Ikazuchi, who might be the most powerful character in the game with her deadly red shot and lightning attacks. You do eventually play as little ol' Rocky again as he tries to protect Pocky's body from monsters, and it's, uh, quite the contrast. It's easy to get used to how powerful the new characters are, then suddenly you're fighting this giant fire-breathing boss taking up most of the screen. And yeah, in case you can't tell, this game is really hard, just like the original. Still, the difficulty is handled well. There is an extra easy mode to unlock if you're brand new to this style of gameplay. And even in the easy and normal settings, if you take damage, you have a chance to get your power-up back. On hard mode, you don't, and that puts just as much emphasis on dodging as there is on attacking. Complete the story mode once and you unlock free mode, where you play with a second player, and complete the story mode twice, and that unlocks Hotaru and Ikazuchi to use in free mode. The gameplay overall is mostly the same with a couple extras added, like using your character's attack augmentation, and to activate that, you simply tap the projectile button quickly. I mentioned Pocky's augmentation earlier, using these pod things that you place in front of you, and you're going to be using that a lot in this boss gauntlet toward the end of the game. Ugh. No, oh, yeah, have I mentioned the graphics? Good lord, this game looks awesome. And I want to shout out the music as well. It features the same level themes but redone, but not overly redone where everything's all orchestrated to death. It sounds mostly the same, just slightly modernized. The new tracks in this game also sound fan frickin' tastic.
So yeah, Pocky and Rocky Reshrined is an easy recommendation. In fact, pretty much everything Tango Project has done, old or new, is an easy recommendation. I mean, I'm starting to feel like I sound like Troy Aikman talking about Patrick Mahomes when during a game he'll say something like, What about the job Patrick Mahomes has done to be able to have the kind of success that he has had to do the things that he's been able to do? It's like I'm running out of ways to praise their work, so I'm left with just empty platitudes. That's just a long way of saying anything from Tango Project is a day one person for me from here on out. This is exactly how I'd like to see Super Nintendo games remade. Later this summer, they've got a Shadow of the Ninja remake coming up and I can't wait to play it, but in the meantime, I'm really happy spending my time playing their releases up to this point, and you should definitely check them out any way you can, and you can do that on Switch, PS4, Windows, and both Xbox Series X and S. Alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.